Hi, I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and today we're going to talk about the azagous fissure, also sometimes called the azagous lobe. We have no significant financial disclosures. The azagous fissure is a normal anatomic variant. It's seen on approximately one-half to two percent of routine chest radiographs. Its formation is related to the development of the normal lung and the surrounding vasculature. In a patient who has an azagous fissure, the azagous vein abnormally migrates through the developing lung instead of medial to it. The azagous vein drains normally into the posterior superior vena cava just above the right upper lobe bronchus. As it migrates through the lung, the azagous vein pulls down a double layer of visceral and parietal pleura, creating a fissure which leads down to the vein at the bottom. Because there are four layers of pleura, we very commonly see a white line leading down to the rounded opacity that represents the azagous vein. Although this is often called an azagous lobe, the medial portion of the right upper lobe is not a true lobe because it does not have a separate bronchus nor a separate blood supply. However, in patients who have an azagous fissure, there is oftentimes anomalous partial obstruction of the right upper lobe bronchus that may cause disease in the lateral portion of the right upper lobe. In a typical case, we see here an asymptomatic 26-year-old woman who is having a chest radiograph because of a positive PPD. We see a rounded opacity in the right upper lung fields. If we magnify this section of the chest, we can see a very thin white line representing the four layers of pleura lining the azagous fissure. And at the bottom of this line, we see an almond-shaped opacity that represents the azagous vein passing through and surrounded by the lung parenchyma. Here is another patient, this time a man. We can see a widened edge on the right side of the mediastinum, and just lateral to it, we see a very thin white line. If we magnify this, we can see the edge of the superior vena cava. We can see the edge of the aortic arch and the edge of the descending thoracic aorta because all of these structures are outlined by adjacent inflated lung. If we now look at a cross-sectional CT image in the same patient, imaged here with lung windows, we can see the left brachiocephalic vein, we can see contrast outlining the superior vena cava, and we can see the white line that represents the four layers of pleura, two parietal and two visceral, at the bottom of which we're going to see the azagous vein. There is a T indicating air column in the trachea. We can see a little bit of air in the esophagus. And the arterial vascular structures include the right brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid artery, and seen adjacent to each other, we have the left subclavian artery and vertebral artery. If we look slightly lower in the same patient, but now with soft tissue windows, we can see once again the T outlining the trachea, the gold star mediastinal fat. We can also see subcutaneous fat. We can see where the esophagus is located. We can see outlined in red the arch of the aorta. And we can see the superior vena cava and contrast opacifying the azagous vein as it passes in between these two segments of lung parenchyma. Imagine, if you will, how an x-ray beam passing from front to back will be able to show us the edge of these structures. If we look at the chest radiograph, again the edge of the SVC, the edge of the aortic arch and descending thoracic aorta, and now superimposed we can see how these shadows are formed by the soft tissue structures of the vessels being outlined against the lung parenchyma. On the right side, the superior vena cava and azagous vein. On the left side, the arch of the aorta. So the azagous vein is a normal variant that forms due to abnormal migration of the azagous vein through the lung parenchyma. Instead of migrating medially, it passes through the developing lung, pulling with it two layers of pleura. As these successive drawings indicate, as the vein migrates through the lung parenchyma, it pulls down a gold layer, the parietal pleura, and it indents the pink lung parenchyma and the red line indicating the visceral pleura. So the azagous fissure 
that we see is just a normal anomalous location of the azygous vein passing through the lung parenchyma. Outlined again here, we see the trachea, the azygous lobe, as it is sometimes called, the remainder of the right upper lobe, the azygous vein, draining into the posterior border of the superior vena cava. So when we see this thin line, this comet-shaped structure, with the opacity at the bottom representing the azygous vein, remember how this is formed by an abnormal migration of the azygous vein through the lung parenchyma, creating this double-layered fissure with two layers of visceral and two layers of parietal pleura. I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and I approve this message. Thank you for your attention.